<laughs> well, I was able to get my hands on an RTX 4090, very excited. Um, it is a Zotac gaming uh, GPU, which I've never been a fan of Zotac. I've never even used Zotac. Um, but after reading some of the reviews that were really non-existent on the 49, I was like, sure, let's buy it. Let's, uh, let's do it. And considering it was the only one that was available, I feel like I made the right choice, right? Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, uh, really excited to get this, uh, you know, put in the new workstation because I'm going to be using this uh, not only for a little bit of gaming, but uh, mainly for video production and VFX and uh, 3D modeling. And one of the reasons why I want to use this is because given uh, on the, the base benchmarks, this thing outperforms uh, the 3090 and the 3090 Ti by anywhere from 20 to even like 45 to even 50 percent, depending on what it is. Um, that you're doing. So I think inside of DaVinci Resolve, this little sucker is going to take my editing and my VFX work to the next level. And that's really what I want. Uh, I want to be able to have very quick, fast, speedy renders. So uh, hopefully the 4090 delivers. So we'll, uh, we'll see and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. But this is going to be the unboxing portion of this because who doesn't love a good unboxing video? So let's get to it anyway. So very nice. It's uh, actually pretty well packaged. All right. Coming in there. And by well packaged, I mean it is in there. There we are. Pretty nice looking uh, front box there. And of course, it comes with uh, some pamphlage. Ooh, well, it's really nicely packaged in here. Probably hard to see. Not bad. Gives Zotek a uh, an A for that. Oh, <laughs> this bad boy is huge. Wow. Woo! It's a chonker. It's a chonker of a GPU. You know what? I actually kind of like the styling of it, and it doesn't have. It's actually got full three brackets here for the uh, the mounting, which is nice. I've, a couple of the other cards that were out there for the uh, the RTX 4090 only had two um, slot mounting brackets, which didn't seem very uh, practical considering half of the unit was you know falling off the side here. Um, this is definitely bigger than the 3090. Um, wow. I'm excited. I actually like the design. It's not bad at all. All right, let's go see how this thing performs inside of uh, my workstation. Diving right into Resolve, I'm throwing some 8K H.265 clips onto the timeline. These are long up formats, so usually they're pretty taxing. As you can see here, we get very fluid playback. They are 8K in resolution of Ken, but the, the quality is really good. Um, you can easily scrub through the timeline, and the, uh, the 4090 actually de delivers a slightly better experience than the 3090, but I would say that it's very much on par with the 3090 um, in that regard. So there's not really any improvement there when it comes to um, timeline playback and reliability. It does look nice though, which is great, so that's a plus. Now we can come into our color tab here. We can add a lot of nodes here. It doesn't really matter what we're doing, and the GPU is actually doing a, a really great job. So I'm gonna add just some a couple effects here. That's a lot. Big explosion. Boop. Here we go, let's we'll scrub through. Getting real-time effects with the uh, the light rays, which is usually pretty taxing, especially in 8K. Uh, we should note that I am on an 8K timeline, so this is playing back pretty beautifully in 8K on an 8K timeline, so that's a big plus as well. Throw a tilt shift on here. Cool. Again, we're still having real-time playback with another node of VFX. So that's two layers of VFX, one layer of color and it's playing back like a champ in 8K. So that's beautiful. The 3090 would probably stutter at around this point, so um, that is a big bonus for the 4090. As far as system specs go, all cards were tested on a custom-built AMD Threadripper Pro 3975WX 32-core system at 4.2 GHz with 512 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and all footage is being run off of a 16 terabyte NVMe Gen 4 internal RAID. Let's jump into the benchmarks now. 
The first thing we're going to look at is how fast an 8K H.264 file works with Neat Video applied. If you haven't used Neat Video before, it's an incredibly powerful tool that eliminates noise in your video, but it also uses a ton of system resources, mainly the GPU. In this instance, the 4090 does come out on top as expected, and the gains are pretty solid, clocking in at 31% better than dual 3090s and over 75% faster with a single 3090. Moving on to 4K footage with neat video applied, we begin to see all three cards level out as the performance gap closes considerably. We see a 21% increase speed from dual 3090s and a 38% increase from a single 3090. When it comes to standard 1080p footage, the 4090 shines through in its performance gains compared to the dual 3090s and single 3090 by being 43% faster. Overall in neat video, you can expect gains of anywhere from 25 to 43% over a single RTX 3090, which is good, but honestly, it's not great. For the price and the specs of the card, I would have expected performance gains of at least 75% over the 3090, but that's just not happening. Moving over to render speeds utilizing 8K red raw footage being exported to H.265, we see a 35% reduction in render time compared to dual 3090s and a 37% reduction compared to a single 3090. It's good, but again, it's not great. Performing the same test, this time with five color nodes active on the 8K red raw footage, we can see a 31% increase in speed over the dual 3090s and a 45% increase in speed over a single 3090. In this case, we're getting closer to that 50% increase in speed, but again, we're still not there. For my last test in Resolve, I exported a 30 second 8K red raw clip with neat video on it, and the results for this one were completely surprising. The 4090 actually performed quite poorly against the dual 3090s, coming in at 32% slower and only 9% faster than a single 3090. I'm going to guess that there's a driver issue here because in every other test performed with the 4090, it did do better than the dual 3090s. But in this case, it didn't happen, but we'll come back and see if uh, there's a new driver update that maybe makes the performance better. Now moving on to Premiere Pro, the results are pretty much not that exciting in every category. For 8K red raw footage being exported to H.265, we only see a marginal increase in render speeds, and by marginal, I mean 1%. Adobe's render engine is abysmal. When it comes to transcoding 8K H.265 to H.265, again, we only see a small increase in render times and performance where the 4090 finishes 5 seconds faster than the 3090. Looking at how both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro compares, we can instantly see that Resolve is actually utilizing the new 4090, whereas Premiere Pro doesn't even come close. Overall, I'm pretty bummed that the 4090's performance just doesn't warrant the price tag, which I paid $1,800 retail for mine. It does perform way better in gaming though, as you can play games like Call of Duty Warzone or Battlefield 2042 on ultra settings with RTX turned on at 120 frames per second plus. But as far as boosting productivity, I don't see the 4090 being an upgrade. So long story short, if you're coming from the 3090 or dual 3090s, you're not going to see a huge performance increase, and in some cases you may actually see less performance. The only reason you should upgrade from the 4090 right now is if you're coming from a GTX 1080 Ti or even an RTX 2080 Ti. Otherwise, save your money. I hope that's been helpful for you guys, and if you have any questions, plop them down below in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and click the bell. Thanks for watching.